Hi, I'm Nikki Johnston. I'm a palliative care nurse practitioner and I've been working in palliative care for the last 25 years. This suite of videos is to introduce you to palliative care. Who's it for? Who can benefit? Who provides it? And why is it everyone's business? Sequence one, the origins of palliative care. In this sequence, we'll be looking at the origins of palliative care. It's quite new, particularly in Australia. We'll be talking about the definitions and how specialist palliative care differs from palliative care done by everyone else. We'll cover the core principles. What is it? What are the definitions? And it's really important that we cover integrated palliative care. What are the origins of the modern palliative care movement? It started back in medieval times as a medieval practice. Palliate meant to cloak and ease suffering when cure was not an option. In 1967, Dame Cecily Saunders brought about the modern palliative care movement and what we see it as today. It really started with cancer and moved to being for anyone, no matter how old they are, what their diagnosis is and where they live. What was so important about that, her approach was that it was a holistic approach and the philosophy was really about dignity, compassion and respect. Dame Cecily Saunders also brought in the idea of total pain. The concept of, of total pain gives us so much information about how our whole body works together. If we don't feel safe, if we don't have enough money, our physical pain is going to be a lot worse and managing that physical pain is going to be a lot harder for clinicians. It's really important that we really get to know people and, and what's important to them and how they're fitting into the world so that we can help them as a whole person with their pain. The history of palliative care in Australia started in the 1800s with mainly the churches and still a cancer focus. In the 1980s, there was a dramatic expansion and by 1991, we had the first peak body Palliative Care Australia. In 2006, we had the first Palliative Care Australia standards. Palliative care is person and family centred care. It's provided for a person with an active, progressive, advanced disease who has little or no prospect of cure and who's expected to die and for whom the primary goal is to optimise their quality of I think we need to start busting these myths about palliative care in Australia because people still don't understand what it is. Palliative care for many people is synonymous with dying. There's a lot of fears about um, palliative care is just for the end of life, the last few days of life. Not just people who need health care, but the people who support health care, the physicians, clinicians, uh, doctors, nurses, people who work in government, who work in health care departments and parliamentarians. I think it's, it's pervasive. So therefore there's less timely referrals to palliative care and access to good end of life care. But it's also about the consumer, the person living in the community, not being empowered to say, hey, this is what I want. I know I can have this. Can you give it to me? Pain is one of the easiest symptoms to control from the start of a patient's journey with advanced disease right up till the end. So when I met Con for the very first time, it was because of very, very severe pain. And this really sapped all of his energy. He was not as mobile, he wasn't as robust, and psychologically it affected him as much as physically. The last few days, maybe two, three weeks, there was no pain at all. I don't know, maybe the, the medicine they give me is good enough to cover up that thing, yeah. If you walk around a palliative care unit, you will see the number of patients that are well taken care of. There is minimal to no pain. So pain is not an inevitable aspect of that journey. I was cranky at one stage because 
I kept asking for help. My oncologist didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. Um, my GP wasn't too sure. Do you think they don't understand palliative care either? Do you think that's a problem? Exactly. Yeah. It's a horrible feeling to think there's nobody out there to help you. Inadvertently, I think a lot of healthcare professionals convey a sense of hopelessness to patients and families, and that they sometimes causes quite a bit of grief and distress directed towards healthcare professionals for not um, having these sorts of conversations around what palliative care is and what the benefits are. Well, I said to a girlfriend, I said, what am I going to do? I said, am I going to die? Or who's going to help? I just felt, um, you know, when you shook my hand and you sat down and started to talk and I thought, no, this is, this is where I need to be finally. And hopefully this will have huge impact for the rest of your life, basically. Oh, I, I agree. Um, yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. And I have, I've got all the faith now in the world, so I know I'm in, now I've got the right team with me and yeah, so I'd, I'm not actually worried about it now. And I think it's a, it's a very pleasant surprise for patients and families that it actually opens up an opportunity that they never really understood. I feel positive, I feel more positive, probably the best I've felt since I've been sick. I think the community often thinks that coming to palliative care means that you're in that last leg, that you only have days or hours left. And that's another one of the myths that we really need to understand is not the case. Hello Giuseppe. What is amazing with Giuseppe is often he, he becomes unwell at home, loses his mobility um, and then needs to come into hospital. Giuseppe, have you been doing any activities while you've been oh, here? Yeah. What have you been doing here? Oh, I am a master, the martial heart. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm feeling good, I still practice. I am 83. Yes. And I fight against young people. <laughs> This has been really good for him because by coming in and almost having a tune-up, you know, symptom control, getting his mobility improved, making sure he's safe, we can get him back home to be with his family and that's where he wants to be. Oh, absolute miss. It's a miss that it leads to death, but it gives you more comfort through the process of the end of life. Yeah, and I'm here really for, uh, uh, shall we say, to be rebuilt a bit, to give me a bit more time. Palliative care hastening death, again, this is another myth. Um, in fact, the evidence is quite clear that palliative care actually can actually extend and prolong life as well as give a better quality of life. And that came as a shock to my daughter several months ago that that I've really been on palliative care for several years. So it's quite an interesting dilemma that we face that as an intervention, palliative care actually extends life for many people, even though that's a difficult concept for people to understand. You don't have cancer, do you? No, you have... no, 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 no. What's your I answer? Had, I had two heart attacks and, and a stroke yeah. while I had this um, uh, um, infection in the, in the lungs, which I always get. Yeah. But at this time, they didn't think I was coming out to it, yeah. coming out of it. So, yeah. but after having that scare and being in ICU, I thought palliative care is this my last legs or not? Yeah. But it wasn't. No. Yeah. So as I said, I did not know what the word meant. Yeah. The myth comes out of the fact that the modern palliative care movement was related very much to really looking after patients who are dying from cancer. So you can see why the myth has evolved. Inevitably, anyone's eligible for palliative care or considerations around palliative care. It was hard coming into something somewhere here like this, whereas I had the wrong um, idea of what palliative meant. I thought I was going to go. I thought I was going to die. People are quite demoralised after a very significant event in an acute hospital, and they're really uh, unsure where things are going to go. But there seems a great reluctance for healthcare professionals to talk about the fact that there could be time ahead and how to best support that. 
I'll tell you what, I've felt really happy here and it's done a lot as a month, so it's done a lot for me. Palliative care adds a huge advantage to the illness experience for a patient, the illness experience for a carer and a family member, and inevitably uh, the ripple effect into the generations beyond the person that has died. We've come so far in such a short time, but we've got to get this right for everyone, like our First Nations people or people from diverse backgrounds. The World Health Organisation says that palliative care is a basic human right. It provides relief from suffering, pain and other distressing symptoms. It affirms life and regards dying as a normal process. It intends neither to hasten or postpone death. It integrates the psychological and spiritual aspects of the patient's care. And it offers a support system to help patients live as actively as possible until they die. It offers a support system also to help the family cope during the patient's illness and in their own bereavement. It uses a team approach to address the needs of patients and their families, including bereavement counselling. It seeks to enhance the quality of life. It may positively influence the course of illness. It is applicable early in the course of an illness. It is used in conjunction with other therapies that are intended to prolong life, such as chemotherapy or radiotherapy. It promotes research to better understand and manage distressing clinical complications. So how is paediatric palliative care different from adult palliative care? It's to help our beautiful babies, our children, our teenagers and our families. It's often for a longer period of time because children die of very complex and chronic conditions. What we do know is if we recognise dying in younger people and plan for it, families feel a lot more supported and cared for. These clips illustrate how care needs differ in paediatric palliative care and what that means for families and carers involved. They are produced by Bear Cottage, which is the only children's hospice in New South Wales providing respite and end-of-life care for children with life-limiting conditions and their families. You don't know how strong you can be until being strong is the only choice you have. Nothing can prepare you for how much everything will change. How much a family will change. And how life will never go back to normal. You go to lots of different places emotionally. Denial. Anger. Bargaining. Depression. And finally, for some, acceptance. Caring for a child with a life-limiting condition is 24-7. There's no let up. There's no escape. It's just with you all the time. It's exhausting, tiring, unrelenting. But also extremely rewarding. The reality is always there, inescapable. It feels like there's no chance of ever being normal again. After all the hospitals we've been in and out of. Bear Cottage didn't feel like one at all. And whilst it doesn't feel like a hospital. Behind the scenes you know there's nothing but the best equipment and people ready to provide state-of-the-art care instantly. But it's not in your face, reminding you all the time. You can just be a family for a while. And you're surrounded by other families just like yours. We share similar stories empathised in each other's grief, laughed without feeling guilty, and openly cried without being embarrassed. In the same place, going through the same things. The same things that you can't explain to other people, but you can talk about with them. After you leave, you never really leave. What is the difference between traditional and now integrated models of care? The traditional model separated the curative phase with a terminal phase. Care teams cared for people trying to cure them. And when this didn't work, no planning was done. They were discarded to the terminal phase. This left people with no plan. Dying was not recognised and outcomes are very poor. The integrated care model joins together the curative part and the palliative care part. And people feel like whole people. We now have evidence that this not only increases their quality of life, but it also extends their life. Palliative care is sometimes referred to as the palliative approach and is a way of treating people which focuses on their comfort. So what have we learnt in sequence one? 
Palliative care in Australia is relatively new and we've got a little way to go. It also strives to be integrated and holistic care. One of the really important things is that the family and the patient are the unit of care, so we care for them all. What we hope for in the future is that everyone can expect to get access to palliative care as it's a basic human right. When we think of palliative care in Australia, it's everyone's business. <laughs>